Hello, friend. Hello, friend. That's lame. Maybe I should give you a name. Hello, Jeff. It's been a while, but I've been working, trying to work on something. Igloo Ghost, his colours, his sounds. I, I can't make the sense of it all. Hello and welcome, I'm Liam the Music Reviewer, the meaning light is a 10 out of 10 <laughs> and today we're going to be doing a, 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 wee, a wee collaboration here, <laughs> I've, I've set it up perfectly, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. you're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not just seeing things, I'm, I'm not joined by Auntie Liam with a new haircut, this is uh, Buffalo State yeah. here, um, I've, I've, I've already, I'm not even like a minute into this and I'm already like hitting out with some roasts. But, um, yeah. yeah, how are you doing, Buff? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing wonderful, man. I'm doing great. Uh, that's a great. Did you pre-plan that line, by the way? I, you... I, I, I was like, I need to have something that like is directed at you and isn't just some sort of throwaway thing. And I know that, yeah, 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 to, like, yeah that's, that was me. good. Uh, if, uh, did, yeah, that wasn't like on the spot, was it? Did you have that like ready? I, I, like... I, I, I kind of, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, a magician never gives away his tricks. Uh, so, gotcha, gotcha. yeah, yeah, no, that's good. That's very noble of you, yeah, for sure. All right, yeah, man. Um, I'm doing but, great, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, and yeah, we've been kind of planning on doing this sort of collab for a while because, mm -hmm. because yeah, I've been following Buff for a while and right, I've only yeah. just started to get into the whole uh, music reviewing thing this year. And we thought, well, there's Igloo Ghost releases. You had Neil Wax Bloom on your album of the year list. Number if two. I remember. Number two. Number two, yeah. yeah. I, I knew it was pretty high up. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it seemed kind of like it made sense to like talk about an artist that we're both yeah, kind of like following. Like... And luckily enough, um, Eglos dropped two EPs yeah, on two, Wednesday. Yeah, two. It was two there. EPs, so one one for your channel, one for my channel. It just it just all fell in the place, you know. So it just makes yeah. sense. It's, yeah, it's yeah. like you know the the Crash and Spiral game that came out the Game Boy Advance. It's kind of like that. Yeah. These are actually good. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, we're gonna talk about uh, Steel Magoo. Yes, we're gonna um, start I, with Steel again, Magoo. Yeah. Yeah, Mogu. That's yeah, um, again. But I'll butcher the names here so sure, much. Sure, sure. It's all people... made up language anyway. So just say how you want. That's I mean, yeah. that's true. Um, but yeah, what what was your kind of like like your reaction to this EP? Because um, for me, it was like EPs felt like totally separate. That yeah. like I could have one and not still feel satisfied. Yeah, and to some I agree. extent. But um, but what's what some of your kind of like overall thoughts on um Steel Mogu? Okay, so it was still Mogu, because obviously all the singles kind of teased to me like he was just kind of sticking to his guns for the most part with his general, like, because Igligo sound is really recognizable, but just kind of mm. fucking around with sound design and just pushing himself as, as as far as possible to be as dynamic and as unpredictable and wild as he could. And with Steel Mogu, when I have heard the title track Steel Mogu, I, I was kind of disappointed with that particular song because it just seemed like kind of regressive for him to me because I didn't really mm. have the same excitement like like Night Racer is kind of more it's just more a good ghost but it's so bombastic and like fast paced and speedy and, and every bit as dynamic as the cuts on Neo Wax Bloom uh, so it didn't really phase me too much that it was just kind of sonically more of the same stuff. So hmm. with Steel Mogu, it seemed like it seemed like maybe like just someone doing an igloo ghost impression almost or maybe not that but Ooh. like it sounded like some Chinese New Year stuff. It just sounded regressive for him. I wasn't mm. really getting like, because because that's the thing with Eagle Ghost is his music's so dynamic and crazy and packed with detail. Like it's always moving. And with Steel Mogu, that's the first time I've ever heard an Igloo Ghost song to where it felt like it really wasn't moving anywhere interesting. So I was like, okay, maybe I just got to sit with this for a bit. Blacklight Ultra was the same until the Danny Brown sample came in and then that freaked oh, me out. Oh God. Yeah, that that like, threw me completely off. Yeah, I was like, what the I fuck? Didn't... Yeah, um, but yeah, uh, like, uh, that really fucked me up for a minute. And then he started creating some, like, a genuinely pretty sick atmosphere on that song in the second half with really thick walls of bass. And just, it was started, like, mm. actually giving off, like, a tone. I was like, okay, then now we're kicking into gear. And then we got My Mode, which is one of the most wild songs he has. I really yeah. love the vocal manipulation on that track. The vocals in that song sound fucking crazy. And I love mm. the way he does that thing where he, like, he'll just 
just fucking punch you in the face with just a violent barrage of bass and then just cut it out really it goes silent you know you know that like where you just yeah I, yeah it's some of the effects and like arrangements on a glue ghost you can't you, i couldn't do a written review of this like you kind of yeah, have to be like like oh my appears and go yeah, like exactly the yeah, hand motions because they are such like vibrant sort of yeah. like soundscapes yeah you're right for me i quite i, I i'm not sure, like i'm not 100 sure which one like out of the two eps i prefer just now but for me, Steel Steel Mogu was it was interesting for me. I do think at some points it might it, it, some could definitely say it's like prototypical Igloo Ghost. It can yeah, almost right. be regressive. Um, and I'm not gonna be one of these people that try to like excuse his criticism by saying, well, actually, if you look at this, because apparent there's this whole kind of Igloo Ghost lore and like yeah. all this like story stuff going on. And apparently, these two EPs take like two thousand years before, before Neil Wax. Yeah, Wax um, yeah. so, um, uh, and again, no, I think people were kind of like kind of like a divided mind of like, oh, this is great. Like, there's some like extra, there's like some substance to it. And other people might be like, is the shame is just like making all this stuff up as he goes on, kind well, of yeah, thing. Yeah I, mean, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. How, I mean, it seems they seem to be pretty well intertwined. And I think, yeah, and I think some of the, I think that, I could be wrong on this, but I think like some of the recurring sound effects and synths are the characters. And that's kind of how it is. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah apparently that's that, how I've always yeah, interpreted Yeah, yeah, like, apparently, like, what's it, the, you know, the, the gelatin worm thing on the Chinese <laughs> New Year cover, Shang Jia. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. is, like, a synth that is in, like, every song. And that's mm-hmm. him, like, going through the worlds and shit, which is crazy. Like, that's fucking... Yeah, weird. that's... It's, it's awesome. Really yeah, yeah, he's quite a character. Because, yeah. because um, I, I think for me, like, if you, like, if you look at the artwork for it, like, the whole character on that is, like, a really kind of, like, dark-looking, like, really kind of, like, not not so much like kind of like a omen type figure, but like somebody that kind of like seems like he's got something dodgy and yeah, going on. Yeah. And I've always I kind of saw that whole EP as being kind of like the new wax bloom sound, but if it was submerged in like I don't know, like kind of like the Garmon Bosey from Twin Peaks or um, you know that Dark right. Who's from Jack and Daxter. Oh yeah, right? yeah, yeah. The the first... Dark Eco, yeah. That's actually yeah, yeah Dark that's Eco. Accurate. That's it. Yeah, that's yeah. It's, it feels like it's been submerged in that, and I yeah, got that feeling from the. What, the the intro track how it feels like it's like constantly kind of like ascending up this kind of like building again not to like see your whole stick of using video game references oh, but it's kind of like the, yeah. the the mega the mega man intro where like like, yeah. how like it starts off and it kind of like goes up the building it felt like that but like the the, the whole city that it was looking over was like some sort of like broken down yeah. like in a like in a blade runner city that just been kind of like ridden with like kind of crime and all that Sure, Again, sure. I don't know. I don't know like the lore, like the back of my hand, but like I feel like there was some sort of like kind of dark, um, unnerving kind of like sure. atmosphere for yeah, me. I, point. I think Steel Movie yeah. generally has got a very kind of like murky kind of feel to it. It's very murky. bassy and growly mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, with and that I, Steel Movie track, though, for me, I just I felt like yeah, like the drum patterns. It seemed like he was just kind of sticking with some pretty regular kind of breakbeat drum patterns. It it just seemed a bit mm-hmm. like it seemed like he was just kind of refusing to really re- really like advance himself in any mm-hmm. majorly interesting way to me. It seemed just kind of like a bare-bones Igloo Ghost track to me. Uh, the, mm-hmm. the atmosphere really started to sink in once we got to Blacklight Ultra, and from that point onwards, it seemed pretty consistent. But with Steel Mogu, I wasn't really getting it as much, but I do agree that generally the whole EP does have like a more kind of dark feel to it. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely not like a front-loaded EP here. Mm-hmm. It's one of those yeah. ones where like it takes a little while. It's a slow burner. It starts to like, take a little while, then it gets to Blacklight Ultra, and then that's it for me. That's when I kind of start yeah. He's getting to his groove. It could, I, I think, the argument can be made that like, um, he was trying to focus too much on this whole like story building thing as opposed to actually evolving mm, his sound. Yeah, and yeah. For me, for me, um, with the other release, any sort of repetition or that kind of worked in its favor. Whereas here, I did feel kind of like sort of bare bones kind of break core yeah, in that. I can, like, there's not yeah like... I can agree with that yeah definitely yeah, I, I, I felt like clear to me played more to his strengths a little bit personally mm-hmm. but yeah, yeah, still, Mogu I... still had some really exciting moments on it like I think the structure of Night Race is quite interesting because mm-hmm. uh, yeah, yeah I, I, yeah. I know this I know some people were kind of disappointed by it but I, yeah. I found it kind of like it, it didn't feel like like utterly kind of like layered and fleshed out but I think it had like a sort of pace going for it where yeah, like it definitely. meant it doesn't like doesn't it goes out with a bang as opposed to like kind of like a kind of fizzling out, which mm. I think kind of like um, segues like perfectly and to clear to my with like because it's kind of yeah. it finishes off on a, like a really fast point and then it feels like it's at the very like last few seconds it's starting to slow down yeah, and if yeah. you were to listen, if you were to like queue up clear to my right after that 
it would just be such a like a smooth segue. Like it feels like they are maybe like two sides of the same coin. Right. It doesn't feel like really doesn't feel like he's making up as he goes along. He feels like he's kind of like he's had some yeah. sort of like whiteboard in front of him. He's went like yeah, it sounds this, uh, cal- this, it sounds very calculated. I agree definitely. Oh, yeah. and I also noticed that I think most Igloo Ghost tracks kind of reach their peak in intensity during the middle of the song, mm-hmm. and they're like yeah. they end with like a really pretty outro or something. Especially mm-hmm. on Clear to Me, but uh, Night Racer didn't really do that. It kind of had a different structure. Mm-hmm. Kind of like it had a really really lengthy build up, and then like a crazy drop in the middle section was pretty wild. But then it fizzled out again a little bit, built up again to another crazy drop, and ended mm-hmm. really intense. So that was something slightly different for him. It's just the sound palette was very much the same. I think. Oh yeah, it was very, it it felt very kind of like limited at points, Um, Mm. and that could have very well been like his whole sort of like plan, but like in terms of like how I interpret the execution, I think that there was, I I think that consistency wise, it wasn't too strong, but like its peaks were like, like really, really high. I agree. Like I say, Blacklight Ultra, My Mode, and um, Night Racer are are three great tracks, but it's a shame that it starts so especially my mode because it feels like at one point like some sort of like something happens like halfway through i can't remember there's like a sound effect kind of like initiate it yeah they're on like out a, like, yeah it's like, like there's like there's like this fucking horn thing and then like yeah then like this feels, sick like laser kick drum thing fucking happens and it sounds mm-hmm. so cool and that kind of kicks and the it, song into the, overdrive yeah mm-hmm. and then danny brown comes in oh yeah definitely yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah oh i mean i meant for a uh, my mode like it feels like there's like some sort of bit in the midway point where sure. um, okay. everything just starts like mute mutate after like it does happen with a uh, black like ultra like yeah, there yeah, is yeah, yeah like uh, my mode i think it's the vocal yeah. thing there's like crazy those crazy mm-hmm. vocals come in and like there's like harsh blast of bass and it goes silent mm-hmm. and you hear like those fucking like right yeah yeah it sounds really cool like the sound yeah. design is still as insane as ever with it like, thing, i mean he could stick with like he sticks with a pretty similar sound palette to what we heard uh, on, you know, Neowax Bloom. You know, when it comes to the very harsh, like violent snares, the fucking booming kicks and shit, the crazy synth mm-hmm. work and the high pitched vocal samples. Like these are kind of just staple things you kind of expect to hear with with Eagle Ghost. But like his sound, the way he fucking spins it on all these songs, it's so just jarring, and oh, nothing yeah. else sounds like it. It sounds like it's from a fucking different dimension. That I really think it's a huge issue for me that he kind of retains the same consistent kind of mm. feel you know uh i think it's it's pretty consistently really dynamic and exciting i never really feel like he's running low on ideas like that you know so even if it does mm. sound similar I, I think he manages to you know compose these songs in really dazzling ways consistently so mm-hmm. yeah, yeah i'm i'm really interested to see how you progress from here on out because i mm. Again, I, I read on Reddit, which isn't really like a really like viable source. And somebody said <laughs> yeah. how they they had heard how this was originally meant to be an album, but he decided, or that was the original kind of like idea, and he split it into two EPs. Um, sure. So I'm, so I'm I'm not sure how like from here on out, um, how his sound because like like we've pointed out, there is some like sort of like sound like the, the general palette can feel kind of like oh I recognise this from like that song in Neil Wax. Yeah, 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 exactly. And that, um, for me, that whole point you made about how each sim for that kind of like represents a character, I think, is really smart. So yeah, it yeah. might just be a case of we'll see these characters be like reintroduced, and mm. there'll be new ones to go along with. And I think that's a really like exciting prospect for me because yeah, yeah. when I think of yeah. like like IDM or electronic music, I really can't think of an artist who's managed to like create stories and characters and yeah. all that without it's without very... even having like. You, like you can you can read the storybook and look online that but you get like a real sense of it just from the music itself which i think is like for somebody at like iglo ghost age as well he's like 18 19 i think oh, no, he's actually like 10 years old you know oh yeah yeah oh yeah <laughs> like, he's, he's, he's just a 10, 10 year old who just got like he just got ableton or something yeah, on his man, computer i'm just like mental, okay, let's get let's go <laughs> <on> to this <laughs> but, but i think yeah, i think it's like 21 the, yeah, or something like that yeah the fact he's doing so well at this age is, yeah, is, is the same kind of like feeling i got from the the let's eat grandma um, really yeah, well, they're really young, yeah, and they're making pretty progressive stuff. So, yeah, yeah, think... the fact that they're doing that at this age, just, it has me more excited and like worried. I think for some bands, I'll hear them make stuff like this and I'll go, "Can they really keep this up?" I mm, think the exactly, fact, yeah. that, like his career is just starting. Goes oh, yeah. So, yeah. But um, j- like to to wrap it up, I think the Steam for me anyway. I think the Steam Goo is, uh, it's a good EP, but it's one that just kind of like takes a wee while to get started up. Mm. And it can feel a bit too. I, I don't know if I want to say the word predictable, but it feels like if you've listened to New Wax Bloom, there's like a good chunk of it where you're like, I kind of know where this is going, but yeah. it's kind of like 
but like it's like watching like depending on what your opinion on films are but like it's like watching a marvel film where like you might mm. know the general structure and that yeah, you do get accurate. like a rare yeah yeah you get like, like a rare movie that kind of like rocks the boat a little bit like you get your four ragnaroks or exactly. something like yeah, that yeah, yeah. No, that's that's accurate yeah i can agree with that I, yeah. I, guess, I guess for Ragnarok would be like that. That what this would be like a Marvel film because it's just so mm. vibrant. What were your kind of like final thoughts on this? Okay, movie? yeah, for me, I mean, I think it's cool hearing Eagle Ghost like kind of revel in a more dark kind of aesthetic, while still retaining to like what you've come to expect from Eagle Ghost. Uh, but I, I personally don't really think he pushed himself into any majorly new territory sonically, mm. uh, which made it slightly unexciting. But still, the songs were there, and it was still really mm. dazzling at points. I think Steel Mogu is the only track that I don't really see myself returning to as consistently as the others. Mm. Uh, but still, I enjoyed it. But I wouldn't call it like fantastic. So I'd probably score it mm. like a seven out of ten for me. Yeah, I think I think seven out of ten is very fair. That's kind of what I'm leaning more towards, like a, a yeah. solid seven. Like at no point did I think, why am I listening to this? Like I had no moments like that. It was just kind of. I did feel in the first two songs as well, it did start to kind of weave the kind of like the, the structure for what was to follow. I yeah, do yeah. wish that there was something more kind of like going on, but the other three tracks so are just some some of the best electronic music I've heard this year. So I, I don't feel too disappointed. I just feel kind of like I wish there was a bit more going for it. Absolutely. But, um, yeah. yeah. So, but, yeah, this is, so we're on uh, the same page in, essentially, give or take. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 it would be like, one disagrees with us, you can always um, let us know because yeah, I feel right. like there is going to be kind of like team nest uh, when it comes to these two. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. But um, yeah, uh, thanks for joining me. Um, My Buffalo. pleasure, man. Um, it's been no problem. great having you on. For sure, um, yeah. you, I'll, I'll link to your channel and also, I don't I, I'll, I don't know when your video will come up after mine or if I'll come up after yours. We'll right, see what yeah, happens. Yeah, we'll just have to. But, yeah, um, yeah. But you'll you'll see what we thought of a uh, clear to my over on Buffalo's channel. Exactly. Um, yeah. But as always, thanks Buffalo, and yeah, as always, yeah, no take care, stay safe, and stay hydrated. We'll do, man. Well, I guess I finally got my answers. It was nice seeing you again. Until next time, friend. <laughs>